Well, happy Wednesday. We've got the sun out for now, but that will change. And I want to show you the radar quickly uh, on a national perspective because all these blobs you see uh, just sort of pop up, those are migrating birds after the sun sets. Uh, we are in full swing of migration season and all those songbirds travel at night to avoid predatory birds like eagles and hawks. And uh, some stuff on radar that is not birds. This is a uh, tropical storm or the remnants of tropical storm Nicholas. A lot of rain falling, of course, across Texas and Louisiana, flooding a huge concern there, as was expected, uh, unfortunately. But over a foot of rain adding up for some spots. And it's an active uh, Atlantic hurricane season, just like last year. Uh, we're watching a system uh, further west in the Atlantic that has a likelihood of becoming a named system, and then an even higher likelihood of this system that we're watching off the coast of Africa that will eventually turn into a potentially named storm. And yeah, this is the 19th named storm in 17 months, eight so far landfalling storms this year, so far, we're not even done. Uh, 11 last year, three is the average for a whole season of storms making U.S. landfall. So that just really gives you the perspective of how active the season has been. Of course, we saw a little rain Monday night, largely missing the core of the metro. The southeastern suburbs and the northern suburbs into central Minnesota did see a fair amount of rain, but uh, in the core of the metro, yeah, it was pretty pitiful. So we're going to try to change that a little bit over the next couple of days. Still rainfall deficits for most of us, anywhere from three to six inches. But there are pockets when we look at 365 day rain deficits that are actually in a surplus now. It's a minority though. Uh, cool morning, feeling a little more like fall increasingly. 40s for most of the suburbs uh, this morning to around the low 50s at the airport. But 32 in Hibbing, the second time they've hit the freezing mark this fall. So signs that we're getting there but overall of course temperatures are way above normal for this month and especially in those overnight lows so that high pressure drifting to the east it's going to allow some of these clouds you can see clouds and showers along a warm front moving out of the dakotas that's going to be the focal point for some showers and storms winds picking up as we get into that southerly flow between the low and high wind gusts tomorrow uh, 20 to 40 miles an hour even higher maybe in western minnesota and that low level wind and mid-level winds transporting moisture from the south. These are dew points all in the 60s moving back up into Minnesota. So it will feel stickier tomorrow and that will help to create some storms. In fact, the low level jet when we go up about four or 5,000 feet really gets going tonight. Uh, and that's why we do expect at least some thunderstorms to erupt just because of that plume of moisture moving north. So here's early tomorrow morning, maybe even late tonight, we could have a couple thunderstorms and then a break largely midday, uh, but that's gonna allow us to warm up Energy pops up and we're going to see a line of storms develop in the afternoon and evening hours. Some of those could be strong to severe. Some questions as to how far east it can get, but then we're looking at maybe more showers and some thunderstorms tomorrow night into perhaps early Friday. And then that all moves out of here for the weekend. But yeah, we're going to have to watch uh, conditions tomorrow because we are going to have that uh, thunderstorm energy, that convective available potential energy, combination of instability aloft. Uh, increased in moisture, and we're going to have shear that could help organize storms. So it looks like mainly wind and hail is what we'll be looking at. Slight risk of severe weather for tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. So that's what we're watching for Thursday. It, we are still in the severe weather season, especially when things are this warm. Uh, the blend of the models isn't very impressive. We're talking maybe a quarter to a half inch of some rainfall. European model, though, a little bit more aggressive, uh, maybe giving us a little hope that, uh, you know, the nature of thunderstorms that we could see in some of those higher downpours, the potential for some one-inch rainfall amounts. So the European model, a little bit more water coming out of that, but when we average the models, so to speak, together, it's not quite as impressive. So it could really go either way. But behind all that, we're going to see some real warmth moving here. Our warmest temperatures of this month, ironically, in the second half. Uh, Saturday into Sunday, Monday, we're talking 70s, 80s, close to 90 is a possibility, but behind it, more of a typical fall roller coaster, a pool of real cool air, coolest we've seen, dive south potentially late next week, so we'll be watching that, but upper 80s, Sunday, maybe Monday too, and yeah, look at that on the map here, a potential that we could uh, see some 90s, so we may not be done adding to our count for 90s for the year just yet. Uh, 75 though this afternoon, nice. We've got sunshine. Clouds will increase though ahead of that moisture coming in for tonight. So tonight into early tomorrow, and then again late tomorrow afternoon evening is when we have the chance of some storms. 82 though with some sun midday, you'll notice it being stickier. Still close to 80 Friday as we clear out. And then uh, heading into the weekend, yeah, it is gonna really be heating up here uh, with the sunshine, windy on Sunday as well. And then potential again for maybe some cooler temperatures by late next week.